This is it. This is the predicted point of closest approach according to all trajectory calculations. And we've now passed the point of closest approach on a broad, sweeping swing past the planet. 2,480 miles above the surface. The date was October 19th. NASA's Mariner spacecraft, after traveling four months and 217 million miles, began fulfilling its mission as it rendezvoused with the planet Venus. The Soviet Union also approached Venus, two spacecraft from two nations. Although the machines were of different design, their purpose was the same. By 1967, we actually had two successful missions make it to Venus. The first one was the Soviet Venera 4, and nearly a month later it was followed up by the NASA's Mariner 5. The interesting thing about that, that we were in the middle of the Cold War, and despite that, the Soviet and American scientists were working together, cooperated, shared the data, and the picture that the scientists got of Venus was much more inhospitable than they really imagined before. By 1967, if there were any doubts about whether Venus was livable or not, those doubts were washed away. It was not really conducive to sustaining life. Now in an unexplored region of space, Mariner was placed on its Mercury intercept course by the gravity of Venus, the initial target on this first dual planet mission. Mariner 10 took more than 3,500 pictures during its rendezvous with Venus in February. For the first time, after a decade of exploration, Mariner 10 was carrying cameras. We had ultraviolet cameras. We could actually make some of the most beautiful images. I mean, here we have Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, and we had yet to really make a close-up picture of her. Pioneer Venus was the last NASA mission to go to Venus to study specifically its atmosphere in detail and the dynamics of that atmosphere. That was 30 years ago that we sent it there. It took a lot of detailed uh, data that allowed us to test theories that we had about why Venus was such a strange environment. And one of the most interesting, of course, is this idea of the runaway greenhouse effect as an explanation for why is Venus so super hot. So while the Pioneer Venus orbiter was sending a steady stream of data back to Earth, the Soviet program undertook several more, actually eight missions, back to Venus. And the highlight of this set of missions was the near 13 and 14, which made it to the surface of Venus, and while they were active there for 45 minutes, they took a handful of color panoramas of the Venetian surface. Now that they have been reprocessed, they present a stunning view of the Venus surface. And forgetting the heat, toxic atmosphere, and the pressure, it really looks tranquil. Venus, the brightest star in the evening sky, has captured our imaginations for centuries. Since August of 1990, though, a spacecraft named Magellan has peered beneath this veil of mystery to show us the surface of Venus in unsurpassed detail. Magellan was a pretty simple and elegant mission. It had one basic uh, purpose, and that was to get a detailed, high-resolution map of the surface topography of the entire planet. And what we saw was, was an enormous surprise, a very young surface, lots of volcanic features, 
There were lava plains and volcanoes and all kinds of features. It was an unexpected and, and marvelous revelation of what was underneath those clouds. At this point, the American and Soviet space missions are really museum pieces. And while everybody is now excited about the new data and the new pictures, images that we're getting from Mars, Venus is really staying in the shadow right now. But throughout the history, Venus has provided us a lot of wonderful and interesting theories and answers to the questions that we have here on Earth and which shone the light on our space in the universe. But new players are coming into the game, and with the European Space Agency sending a spacecraft there in 2006, and the Japanese Space Agency planning one in 2010, the Venus exploration is going to pick up, and it really seems that a very good opportunity to go back, because there are lots of things that we still don't know. And with nearly two decades passed from the last U.S. mission to Venus, isn't it time we go back?